I don't actually know if I've done a full face of one brand before. I can't remember, but if I have, then it's been a minute. So let's get started. Today is Charlotte Tilbury, and I'm really excited about this. I'm actually gonna be using her skincare too, because I had a whole load sent to me, and I was like, you know what, I wanna try some of this, and some of it I'm already using. So this is the Glow Toner, which includes niacinamide, which is my ultimate hero ingredient in skincare. It's portite and peptide. Well, I don't know how you're supposed to say all that, but <laughs> anyway, it's an exfoliant. You can apply this daily. It reduces the look of pores. Skin feels baby soft and smooth. So yeah, you can apply this AM and PM, by the way, to clean dry skin. I'm gonna just give this a bit of a shake. I've got nothing on my skin at the moment. I'm gonna apply this to a cotton. It's quite a thick liquid, actually. It's not as kind of fluid as I thought it was gonna be. Let's apply this all over. All right, it kind of smells, I don't know how to explain it. It's not like fragrancy as in, you know, there's like fragrance in it. It's like natural, a natural smell to it. Just gonna let that dry. Now that that's all settled down, I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Serum. So I'm just gonna put, I'd say about one drop. Just let that sink into the skin. It does give you a kind of like natural glow to the skin, doesn't it? You know, when you use all these products together. And now we're gonna use the Magic Cream by Charlotte Tilbury, which I do love and I have used on my clients for many years. And I do love the smell of this too. I'm gonna use the Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. My shade is 9.5 Tan. And I'm gonna start with the eyelids because I just wanna get these nice and kind of flawless. This is a really good concealer, by the way. Like, I feel like it doesn't make everything look cakey. This is my Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Powder in 2 Medium. Okay, we're gonna do the whole base and then we're gonna move on to the eyes. This is gonna be a very, like, pretty look, but not too pretty, if that makes sense. Like, not too, oh, that's such a pretty look. It's just, like, pretty, but also really nice, kind of, like, a little bit sultry but not too much, just on the edge of it. I have to say, I really like this skincare, like using it, you know, like when you use it from one brand and I actually really like this. I don't know what it's gonna be like later on, like I'll have to see, but I really do like this. Go in with my concealer and I'm gonna now do a bit of underpainting. So I am gonna apply my foundation on top of the concealer. So it's gonna be interesting to see what this whole looks like this whole looks like, I just mi missed out one word there. This whole look looks like. If you feel like you're getting value from this video, then please do hit the thumbs up button because it's really gonna help my channel out. If you wanna see more videos like this, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also that bell button so that you're notified every time a new video drops. I am on all of the social media platforms listed below and links to these can be found in my description box below, along with some amazing discount codes from some of my favorite beauty brands. Thanks so much for your support. Now let's get back to this video. I do like the way the skincare has kind of left this kind of veil of glow on my skin. This is my Hollywood complexion brush and I'm just gonna like kind of like blend in these bits here. And then with my sponge, just blend this under eye area. Now you wanna make sure that you keep the concealer in the area that you've applied it. It's quite easy to kind of start blending and make the mistake of kind of like blending it everywhere. You have to remember it doesn't need to go everywhere. The concealer doesn't need to be everywhere. It is a good idea to apply a tiny bit of, bit of it, you know, in other areas. And like I applied a little bit with the wand, but you can take whatever excess is left on the sponge and kind of go on to other areas. And the reason for that is to make sure that it doesn't look like, you know, there's a whole area missing. So what I'm trying to say is it's important to apply the concealer in other areas, but not as much, just a very, very small amount. I'm a little bit puffy on my under eyes today. The last couple of days has been like that, I don't know why. But anyway, I'm gonna go in with a darker shade, concealer, and I am just gonna apply this just to certain areas. This area here is really gonna help to kind of sharpen my jawline a bit. And then obviously this area here is gonna help to 
chisel my cheekbones a bit and then this here helps to kind of like lift the area a bit. Now I do also want to apply it on my nose so I'm just going to do a little V here because I like a kind of smaller tip of my nose. Gonna get a Hollywood complexion brush. I'm gonna use both sides. I'm gonna start with the bigger side and I'm gonna go along this area here first. Now you wanna make sure you keep the product in the area that you've applied it. It really doesn't wanna be mixed into other areas. But what you do wanna do is kind of soften the edges so it just looks like a kind of blurred line. There you go. And the trick is, is don't take your brush anywhere. Just keep going over where you've applied it. Don't move the brush into other areas and you won't get it there. This will always go down into the jawline, like into the neck area, because that creates that shadow. So this is probably the one area that you do want to move it downwards as opposed to just keeping it in the area. Okay, I'm gonna take my smaller side of the Hollywood complexion brush and I'm just now gonna kind of blend this in. Now I'm going to take my Beautiful Skin Foundation in 7 Neutral. This is my favourite foundation from Charlotte Tilbury. Honestly, I, I love this foundation. Okay, so I've got some on my hand. I'm going to get my sponge and remember to buff it into your sponge first. You can call it whatever you want. Buff it into the sponge, buff it into the hand, whatever. But as long as you are doing that before you apply it to your face. Because what you don't want to do is take a whole load of it, start going in and you've got a whole load of product that it's not going to blend well, it's not going to look seamless. If you want that seamless, blended, flawless look, you've got to kind of like really get it into the sponge before you start putting it on the face. We're going to start on the forehead. And you'll find, by the way, when you do it this way, like buff it into the sponge, you need a, you know, much less product compared to what you probably would do if you to just go in with a whole load of product. I do always go down the jawline because I just feel like you don't want that kind of like line there and that mask effect to your foundation. So that's probably the only place I kind of like smooth the sponge over as opposed to kind of like buffing it in. Now, before I go in with my powder to set it, I'm going to go in with my Beautiful Skin Sunkissed Glow Bronzer. This is in number three tan and I really, really do like this. What I'm going to do is get a sponge and kind of buff it into this product here and then just go on the back of the hand to make sure, you know, there's not a whole load that's gonna go on my skin. And then I'm gonna go over where I've sculpted, but also in other areas. So kind of go on the perimeter of the face, it's gonna give me a really nice kind of sun-kissed look to my face, and you're gonna see this come through now. There you go, I'm happy with that. I feel like it's given me some warmth and I like the kind of sun-kissed look it's given me. I really like this whole glow. I really, really do. So I'm gonna take my powder, my Airbrush Flawless Finish. I always have to read it before I, I can't read it at the same time as doing it because it's such long names. That's the only thing I would say. It's just like, let's just shorten it a little bit. And this is too medium. So I'm used to kind of setting with a loose powder. So this is very different for me. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do the under eyes first. I'll be interested to see what this actually kind of turns out like, like how it sets, because I always use a loose setting powder. This is usually the technique I would say anyone with mature skin should use, just because it, you're less likely to kind of end up with a kind of, you know, that horrible cakey finish. I get a lot of questions on YouTube, people telling me what happens when they end up using a loose setting powder, like pressing it onto the skin with a sponge and they feel like it looks and feels quite cakey. So I would say this is a good alternative because you're not pressing it into the skin with a um, pow powder puff. So with this way, you're kind of applying it with the brush wherever you feel that you need it. I mean, it's not really where it looks like it needs it. It's also where you should, you know, basically you should understand your skin a bit better and sh you should know throughout the day, where do I get creases usually? Where does it end up looking like really bad? Like in terms of like oily and things like that, then those are the places that you wanna make sure you really kind of target. I'm gonna go over my brows cause I don't like it when I have shiny brows, like, you know, around the hair. I'm pretty impressed with how this sets, to be honest. Like, I always recommend it and use it on other people, but on myself, I haven't actually ever, I don't think, set my makeup using this powder, but it's quite good. Now, what I am gonna do is go in with the same powder, but shade three dark, 
and I'm gonna set the other areas using a bigger brush. So you know the areas that I've actually applied the bronzer. I'm gonna go in with this slightly darker shade powder because what this is gonna do is it's gonna help to still enhance the area in terms of like the sculpting, but it's also setting it at the same time. I really like this whole combination of using these two shades. I love it because it's giving me that kind of matte finish that I want or, you know, matte enough for it to last a decent amount of time. But also I'm still getting that kind of, that 3D effect come through with that dark shade. So I would highly recommend that. Don't be afraid to kind of like multi, not multitask, but like, you know, use a couple of products. Like I'm using the same powder, but two different shades. So I'm using two medium and three dark. Two medium is used on all the kind of like areas which are my skin color basically. And three dark is being used on the areas where I sculpt or I want it to be a little bit more kind of like contoured or bronzed those areas. And it, and it kind of sets it at the same time as kind of making sure that that definition is still there. Next up is my brows. I'm gonna use the legendary brows, brow gel, whatever you call it. I'm gonna just take this through my hair. We're gonna let that dry for a minute. I'm really liking this face, guys. I didn't think I was gonna like this that much, but I'm really liking it. Okay, we're gonna use the brow cheat in black brown, and I'm gonna start shaping my brow. It's actually a good brow pencil. Sometimes I feel like I don't give products enough of a chance on myself. Like I'm so kind of varied when it comes to my kit working on other people like my separate kit for clients. But I feel like I need to be a bit more adventurous for myself. Actually a really good brow pencil. Okay, really happy with those brows. Now I'm gonna go in with my Eyes to Mesmerize Cream Eyeshadow in Pillow Talk. I'm gonna apply this to my whole lid just my lid, I'm gonna go slightly above the crease, but I'm focusing on applying this to my entire lid. You might wanna kind of apply some on the back of your hand first, just so that you don't go in with a whole load of color. I really like using cream eyeshadows as a base for my eyeshadow because I feel like it gives me something to work with so I'm not just kind of like hoping for the best each time I go in with a color. I feel like it's an easy way to create an eyeshadow look. So if you wanna use a cream eyeshadow with powder eyeshadow, you can very easily. Just use your cream eyeshadow as your base over your lid. Make sure it's not too dark because you can darken it with the powder eyeshadows in the areas that you want to, you know, to create some depth to the whole eye. So I always prefer going in with a slightly kind of like lighter cream eyeshadow, not necessarily lighter than your skin tone, but not so harsh. So it doesn't look harsh when you apply it to your skin tone. So really it's down to your skin tone. You have to pick something which when you apply it to your skin doesn't look like, okay, I can really see such a harsh line on the edges. So whatever color allows you to kind of like have something that doesn't look crazy obvious. Now I've taken it into the socket with my brush and then kind of lifting it up here a little bit so it's just a little bit feline. So you see what I mean, right? So if we look at the difference, we've got a shade here, which you can see I've got something on my skin, but it's, when I've applied it, the color isn't so drastically different to my skin tone that I can see harsh edges, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the other side. I really focus on applying it to the whole lid first just up to the kind of like socket. And once I feel like I've got a good amount of color there and it's nice and even, whatever's left on the brush, I take it into the socket and then drag it upwards here at the end. Next, I'm gonna use my Pillow Talk Luxury Palette of Pops and I'm using number three, Smoke. You wanna get quite a small pencil brush because we don't wanna apply this everywhere. What I'm gonna be doing is applying this just along the end here. just to create a slight kind of like very light flick, but we're not focusing on it looking like eyeliner. It's really just like a kind of wave of, of a darker shade there. And I'm really focusing on the end of the lash line. See how we've got that very subtle lift there? And the nice thing is it's in a kind of shimmery 
finish. See this way, you've applied a really nice kind of wash of color all over with the cream eyeshadow. So you've got color everywhere, but now what you're doing is adding depth to different places and adding shape to the eye. The depth is because it's a slightly darker shade and the shape is because of where we're applying it. So we're applying it at the end and dragging it upwards a very, very small amount. So it kind of like gives you more of a nice feline eye, which isn't so obvious because it's not harsh because obviously it's more kind of blended in. Now I'm gonna get some of that cream eyeshadow again and I'm using my Charlotte Tilbury eye smudger brush for this. I'm gonna take this just into my lower lashes all the way across because it's like not a very, it's not too dark. I don't know how that sentence was gonna come out there, but it's not a very dark color. You can go all the way across into your lower lash line. And this is what I really wanted to show you today is that you can use pinks and not worry about it you, like looking so, you know, like very pretty pink. You can, if you're clever with your application and the colors you use, you can make it look a bit more kind of like just nice and sultry, but not overly sultry. Now we're gonna take some of that pop color, that three that we were using, and we are gonna go into the lower lash line, but just along the outer part of the lower lash line. I'm taking my Walk of No Shame eyeliner pencil. This is a really nice pencil to kind of blend in. I'm gonna apply this all the way across, so almost like drawing a kind of eyeliner look, but I'm not kind of gliding it all the way across. I'm kind of like doing little lines very close to my lash line. I don't wanna make it too thick. And I'm not creating a flick at the end, I'm just doing it really close to my lash line. And then immediately I'm gonna take my eye smudger brush and I'm gonna kind of like flick inwards or to the side, just to kind of like buff that pencil in. So it gives a very subtle kind of smoky definition to the lash line. There you go, you can see it there. Now I'm gonna take my Rock and Coal Iconic Liquid Eye Pencil in Barbarella Brown. And I'm gonna do exactly what I just did, but I'm going a little bit closer to my lash line. And that's gonna create a really nice kind of gradient finish to that lash line area. Don't create a flick with it. We're gonna go straight in with this brush, go side to side or flick inwards, whatever feels better to you, just as long as you're not going outwards. There, I like that. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of a flick here, but quite small. Because I want this brush to create that kind of longer flick and just lengthen it a little bit. So that it looks like faded out. It doesn't look like I've drawn it in. Use your finger if you wanna drag. I'm happy with that. Look at the difference, right? When you apply a pencil and you blend it in, it just gives you more kind of like definition to the eye. Okay, so remember a bit closer than where we applied the other pencil, because we want that really nice gradient effect to the lash line. Go straight in with the brush and then flick either to the side or inwards. Now we're gonna draw a little tiny flick don't lengthen it, that's the trick, keep it short. Because then, when you use your brush to blend it in, you can lengthen it and get the perfect kind of length flick. Whatever's left on this brush, I'm just gonna take it into the outer lower lash line. I'm gonna take the shade number two in this Pillow Talk Luxury Palette of Pops, and I've got a little bit on my finger, and I'm just gonna go a little bit on the center of the lid Try not to touch where you've applied that kind of pencil, but it's just to give me a bit of kind of pop there. Okay, let's go in with the Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes Mascara. And I use the kind of like flat side to really press into the underside of the lash at the root. And then I use the kind of spikes on the wand to just kind of like drag it through. That way I've got like a really kind of thick root lash, so it gives me more kind of volume. 
Make sure you do look down into the mirror when you're doing this bit because otherwise it can be a bit tricky. You really want to kind of see the roots of the lash from the underside. I do feel like there's a specific way to use this mascara because I feel like I've used it before where I've only used the kind of like the spikes of the wand and I haven't utilized that flat section of the wand and it isn't as good. It doesn't like kind of like stay lifted as long. So if you feel like, okay, I've tried this mascara and it really doesn't give me that whole push up lash, I feel like what you need to do is use that kind of flat part to lift the root first. It makes so much of a difference to your lashes and how they stay lifted. Because we've all been there, right? You know where you apply a mascara and you're like, okay, this is really like great when I first apply it and then it just goes flat. So that's just a little kind of tip from me. And I feel like you could do that with any kind of mascara, I suppose, depending on the brush size. Now I'm gonna do it on the bottom lashes, but I don't use the flat part on the bottom lashes because I don't like very kind of thick lashes at the bottom. I just want them to kind of be brushed through. Next up, we're gonna be using the Cheek to Chic Swish and Glow Blusher in Pillow Talk. And I'm gonna apply, I'm not using really that middle part, I prefer the outside part of it. And I'm just gonna apply it up here. I don't really wanna apply it on the center of the cheek. I just want it to kind of apply it around here so it kind of lifts the area. I have to say guys, I am really impressed with how that powder has set my face. I so far cannot see a single line developing where I would usually get it had I have not set with a powder. And I'm so surprised because my under eye area is smooth. Really shocking. I don't know what kind of lip to do. I don't know whether to do like a deep lip or a kind of lightish lip. Okay, I think we're gonna go for the like lighter lip. This is the Lip Cheat in Icon Baby. This is a really nice lip pencil, like color. I already love the Lip Cheats from Charlotte Tilbury. I think they're great. They're probably one of the best lip pencils that kind of stayed put. But this is actually a really nice color. Okay, I'm gonna use the lipstick in 90s pink. And I might mix in another one into it. So I've just applied a little bit of that and I'm just gonna like blend this in. Now I'm gonna go in with Icon Baby lipstick. I'm just gonna block. That Icon Baby has a little bit of sheen in there. I didn't realize, but it actually looks quite nice. Okay, and lastly, let's apply some Hollywood Flawless Filter in number five tan. I'm gonna put a little bit on the back of my hand. Get a sponge and just up here where I have no texture. Well, very little. On the peaks of my cheekbone, quite higher. And that is my finished look by Charlotte Tilbury. I'm quite impressed with all, with all of this. Okay, so that is more or less my look done, guys. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to know what your thoughts are on this look. Do you wanna see more one brand tutorials? Like, let me know if there's any other specific brands that you want a full face of, because I'll see what I can do, go out and buy the products, or see if I can get them in PR. Like, whatever it is, I'm gonna try and get it done for you. So please do let me know if, what brand Brand. What brand are you interested in to see a full look? I am super, super impressed with the setting using this powder. Like I still feel like I've got a glow to the face. It's not just in the area that I've applied the flawless filter. I feel like everywhere in general, I've got quite a nice glow. I am really impressed. I would 100% use all of this. Like I feel like with the skincare, with the foundation, everything together, it looks really, really good. And it definitely does give you that lip from within glow without having to use a whole load of highlighter. Like I know some people, including me, sometimes I have done, do use this all over the face before they apply their foundation, which you can do. But honestly, I feel like you get a really good glow with using the skincare and that foundation. Like that foundation is really good. 
the beautiful skin foundation. It is very, very good. And I like the finish. I like the way it looks, even face to face, not just in camera. Don't forget, I do have an online publication, guys, called The Beauty Breakfast Club. Make sure you head on over. Link will be in my description, which gives you all sorts of newsletters about beauty, loads of tips, lo loads of tricks, loads of kind of very informative information. I'm gonna say bye now. So I wish you all the love in the world for your week to come, sending you loads of good vibes. And if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.